Welcome back to Ralph's house. Yes, welcome back. And uh, what are we looking at, Ralph? Uh, well, I'll tell you, if you watched um, some of the other videos, as well as doing bits on the house, um, which I'm still continuing to do, and we'll be doing a bit more of that in this video, um, I, I've also got an interest in old valve radios, and uh, I'm getting better and better at it all the time. Uh, and I'm pretty fearless with it, even though they are live chassis, you are dealing with you know high voltages in this thing uh, which could potentially kill you um i'm mindful of that and just very careful what i do uh, but this one dates back to i don't know 1940s 1950s they made it for quite a while and the fascia's off it at the moment because i've literally just pushed the chassis into the case so i could fire it up i don't really want to be handling a live chassis and normally when you're working on valve radios you use a isolating transformer so you're completely separate from the mains and you normally use a variator and slowly bring the voltage up uh, but what i do know about this radio the guy that had it before said well it worked last time i used it which was pretty recent so i thought right and when i opened it up all the capacitors in it they were the old wax ones so i thought right well i'm not going to fire it up until i've replaced all those and i have done that and uh, what i'm about to do is turn this thing on so we'll do that and bear in mind it's valve oh the dial lights have lit up we just got to wait until some valves start lighting up at the back yeah it's all exciting stuff but uh, of course these days you can get a radio on a, an integrated chip but this is this is early radio this is when people really sat and listened to it probably before they were oh I learned from Miss Rain how the Castilian Admiral... Right, well, I'm going to turn it off because it works. So, I'm really pleased about that. Another fix at Ralph's house. And uh, maybe I'll feature this a little later in the video because uh, my next job is to start rewiring the downstairs. Um, I have a temporary circuit. I'm in the kitchen at the moment. And I've got a temporary circuit here, it's, well it's basically one long um, radial circuit and everything in the kitchen runs off that, it's fine. Um, I've got an electric oven in here, that's on a suitable cable and on its own uh, RCD, so everything's quite safe down here. But I still don't have power in the front room and I'd like to be, to be, be, be able to do that before winter so that you know over the winter months with the heating on I can get that all decorated and get it all finished in there. So, yeah, welcome back to Ralph's house and welcome back to the Bush Duck 10. And I will show you that a little later with all the fascia on it in all its glory. And also, I've got a new car. Uh, it's not ready for me yet. It's got to be all valeted and stuff, but Honda Civic, look at this. Sat nav. There's your speed up there. Right at your eye line so you know exactly what speed you're doing. You have to keep looking down there to find out what speed is. Mm. yeah well anyway i don't want to dwell on cars but yeah this will suit me very well <laughs> now i'm outside pruning and i'll show you why i'm pruning um when my dad dug out this pond and made this pond he fitted two strips of decking side by side to make a kind of border for it but you see that lot, it started to rot out just about everywhere and I don't really want to leave this for the winter, it needs replacing. Now I've measured it, it's five foot that way and something like six foot that way. I've still yet to make the measurement that way. Um, but the width of this decking is wider than what I'm going to replace it with, only a little bit. And I, I bought some scaffold boards that originally I'd planned to use on my former garage um, to support the opening but I didn't use it in the end but uh, so they didn't cost me much two boards I think it was 28 quid um, so I'm going to replace all the board 
with that. Uh, the only thing is, like I say, although it's five foot, what I've actually got to get right is the internal dimensions so it sits over the pond correctly. Anyway, um, I'll show you what I've done with the scaffold board. I've picked up a couple of gallons of this stuff uh, when Aldi had it. Because, I don't know, it's about 20 quid normally if you go and buy it, but I think it was something like 5 99 And it's, it's pretty good because it'll soak into timber and it leaves it a nice waxy coating, as you see. Ideal for fences. So I thought, hmm, well that'll do for the pond surround. So, yesterday and last night I was painting these with that stuff. And uh, what I've done, because it's 22 wide, I've measured 22 from the end, drawn a diagonal out line, and I shall cut that piece off. And I should do that to every piece, and I should be able to join it all together like a picture frame. And I should have enough left over to put a block under each join where it sits at the end. Uh, scaffold board's pretty, uh, pretty sturdy stuff anyway, and I should be able to walk along it, but... Um, I will put an extra piece in the middle. But the good thing about it, having this standoff, is it means finally I can get these sort of pipes actually running underneath the timber and hidden away in the water because it's a bit of an eyesore with that slung across. But in the meantime, I do have to filter it. So uh, that's my plan, get all that cut. I haven't got many places I can cut timber at the moment, but I can out the front and I've got a workbench an old fashioned one, don't buy one of the modern ones, they're rubbish, you want the old ones, and a trestle table. And then I'll run my circular saw through it, cut the wood, treat the ends where I've cut it, and then we can start clearing the rest of this and get the frame down. Scaffold picture frame, that's basically what it is. Anyway, cut 45 degree angles, seal the ends, and obviously it'll join that way to make the frame. And uh, I'll just put a block of one under each corner, which will fasten those two pieces together, and one in the middle to take the weight. Job done. Incidentally, if you're wondering how I'm getting on with this old bush baker light radio, <laughs> um, I'm, I've recapped it all. They're all the all capacitors, the yellow ones. I've got a couple more to do. Um, I've got an XY capacitor across the mains for safety reasons. Uh, and if you're not into electronics, I guess that means nothing really. Uh, but what's interesting is how things have changed. Look, these are the resistors that I've got to replace. Uh, well, I've got to replace them all, but I think most of them would have gone out of tolerance by now. But the modern equivalent, look, look how much smaller it is. <laughs> Tiny, isn't it? Um, but I'm going to have to do all of those. Um, I have fired this setup, and it it place fine uh, but I do seem to have a mains hum at certain frequencies not across the whole band but as a tune across it's you know I don't know so many steps it comes back again and um, so you know having recapped it all I think we'll get all the resistors done as well and then uh, I can have another check on it but you know from China these are pretty cheap these things I think I've got 300 for a I don't know about a fiver something like that cheap as chips Anyway, next day, as it often is, I made this frame. It is heavy, though. I'll give it that. And uh, the corners are held together like that. And I've got these supporting blocks halfway down. And that should just sit on the pond just right. Uh, but over in that corner, I've got to clear all of that and uh, turn off the filter and pump. I've already moved a lot of the decking across the back. And I've just got to move all these plants out of the way and uh, pull up the rest of the decking. Getting a bit more room with this. Uh, looks like my dad had done it a similar way, but because I'm using thicker boards, I don't need quite so much support. But uh, yeah, let's get all this wood out of the way. Um, It'd probably take the fish a while to get used to the fact that the waterfall isn't here anymore, it's over there. And uh, I'll probably have to move those irises as well. But I'm just giving them some food to keep them busy. And then uh, I'm going to go indoors and get dry, because I got pretty wet doing all this. And uh, we will look at how we can 
dress up the outside. There's still a bit of debris in that pond, there's some roots down there, but I'm not too worried about them because the fish seem to like that area for cover. So maybe leave a few roots in there. They're not coming through the line and it's just coming over the top. Yeah, and look, a water lily. There's another one somewhere, but it, I think I've probably knocked it under the water again. That doesn't matter. Yeah, there are quite extensive roots under there. I shall have to have a look at that and decide the best way to do it. Uh, I don't know roots of what, I think actually it's ivy. Because I had to clear a load of that yesterday. Yeah, fish don't seem to be bothered. Um, I've got this piece of mesh in the corner, my dad put that in. And it gives you a real indication of how low your pond water is because that's level with the top of the liner. So it could probably do with a bit of extra water in here, but it's not its not too bad at the moment. But yeah, and then uh, I'll come out again later and try and fish out some more debris. But all in all, yeah, it looks a lot better. Hmm. Well, it took a few days, but, you know, if you want to do a job right, you've got to do it right, haven't you? <laughs> Still got a fair bit to do, uh, but... Mainly I want everything to dry out because this has been a, a wet exercise and also this filter I've decided needs to go right back against the shed and I'll put in a longer pipe to take water into the pond but that's all that's shown. I forget this green pipe because I'm filling up the pond from the tap but that corrugated type pipe is the one that uh, sucks water from the pond and it doesn't really show so much now. And probably what I'll do is I'll bring these irises that way a bit and hopefully hide that pipe. But yes, it looks a lot better than it did. Uh, it'll just take the fish a couple of days to get used to the fact that, oh, things have changed. That wasn't there before. There's a sound you don't hear so much nowadays, is it? Particularly when you listen to what the tune is. It's Popeye the Sailor Man. What kid nowadays is going to know what the hell Popeye the Sailor Man is? <laughs> Shows you how old that chime is, doesn't it? Hmm. Anyway, a vast improvement, and I needed to do it before winter. Because, uh, just to give you an idea of what it was like, I'll show you. It had really rotted out. So I'm drying this out out here, and then... Uh, I'll get to burn it, perhaps Friday, well, I don't know about Friday night, we'll think about it, maybe into next week, uh, by which time some of this stuff will have rotted down. The trouble is, you see, at the moment, the garden waste bins aren't being collected because they're not seen as a priority with people off sick with Covid, and, well, at least being told that they ought to stay off because they've been in contact with somebody who had Covid, so it's taking less of a priority, but... It's a bit of a nightmare for me because I've got all this lot to shift. And my sister did say, well, just get skipping. Uh, yeah, well, I could do, but uh, I think, you know, perseverance, it'll eventually all go. What won't burn will go in that garden waste bin when they finally come to like, collect it. But, uh, aren't these fabulous? And my sister will know the name. And uh, just to prove me wrong, and how smart she is, but these are lovely. And the ferns behind just sets them off nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's me out in the garden uh, for this week. I shall literally be pottering around and trying to clean up, get some more plants in around the edges and uh, disguise it a bit. I didn't cut too, back too much of the ferns, but I did dig one out and I've replanted it right over there in the corner further back because it was a little bit too near the, uh, the edge of the pond you know but uh, come the spring next year this is going to look absolutely fabulous And that brings us to two o'clock and our new summary. 
President Johnson is to make a major speech on Vietnam in about half an hour's time. He's expected to say whether he considers the bombing of the North to be effective or not, and whether it should be stopped. Here at home, 16 pit closures have been postponed at least until the end of the year to ease the unemployment situation. More industrial news. Vauxhall workers will start going back on Monday now that the unions have agreed to new talks. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.